Hello, this is Mike Wassmer from live to zero In this video, I'm going to demonstrate one approach for using Excel 2010 to query a Campbell Scientific .dat file, or really any text-based comma-separated value file for that matter. My main assumption here is that the user does not have access to a relational database. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to mention that I attempted to query the .dat file directly from Excel, but I ran into all sorts of problems with the data provider drivers such as the formatting of dates that they perform. So therefore my recommendation is to set up a connection between your .dat file and an Excel workbook. This workbook will act as a quasi database and I'll refer to it as the Excel repository throughout this video. When it comes time to query the repository for further analysis you'll open up a new Excel workbook and query the Excel repository from this new workbook. So let's get started with the demonstration. Okay, first um, you can see that I have uh, I have LoggerNet open here. So in the setup screen, I just want to show you that um, where I have the .dat file configured. So in the Data Files tab for the Iowa State 09 Data Logger Station, you can see that the .dat file is being saved to my desktop, and this is that file uh, right here on the desktop. Okay, so at this point I want to, um, I'm going to close LoggerNet because right now the, the file is, um, is continually updating, but uh, I, don't, I don't want our work with the .dat file right now to interfere with the data collection. Okay, now we want to start working with the .dat file. So what we're going to do first is open up Excel 2010 and uh, one of the typical ways of importing uh, text-based files into Excel is to drag and drop onto the worksheet, uh, which we're doing here. And all the all the uh, data is in the first column, so we're going to go to data tool the data tools panel and say text to columns, delimited by commas, and there we have it. However, um, as you can see here in the uh, the connections panel and the workbook connections dialog box, we haven't actually created a uh, a link to the source .dat file. Uh, so if when changes are made to that .dat file, they will not be reflected in in this worksheet here. So this uh, this solution is not going to work for us in this case. So I'm going to close this workbook. And um, what we're going to do instead is we're going to set up an external data collection, sorry, uh, external data connection to the .dat file by going to get on the get external data panel, go from text, and then we're going to go to the desktop and select the .dat file and import it. Um, and what we'll uh, because this first row here is just some metadata that's not really useful to us, I'm going to start the import at row two. I'm going to say that we're we're uh, comma delimited. Hit next, and I'm going to accept the the um, default data formats because uh, Excel actually turns the the date string here in in the first column into Excel. Uh, Excel date formats, which is what we want. So we're going to um, we're going to say finish. Uh, then when we get to the import data dialog box, we are going to go to properties. And uh, I always like to uncheck the prompt for file name on refresh. Uh, so when we refresh this data, if there's new data in the .dat .dat file and we want to refresh it in this Excel workbook, then we don't have to point back to the original .dat file. Okay, we're done with that setup. So I'm going to hit OK. And you can see, so this is all the data from the .dat file. And we have a live connection to, to that file, which is what we want. At this point I'm going to, I'm going to uh, save this, the Excel repository. I'm going to call it um, ISU data, save it to the, de the desktop from now, 
for now. And close it. Okay, next what we want to do is we want to create a new workbook. Now that we have our Excel repository in the ISU data dot uh, XLSX file, we can create a new Excel workbook from which we're going to query our Excel database, our Excel uh, repository. Um, now the way we're going to do this is we're going to start by going to the data tab. We're going to click on from other sources, from Microsoft query. I'm going to, on your, on your system, um, this use the query wizard to create edit queries may be checked by default. I, I like to uncheck that because uh, that's not a wizard that I find very helpful. So I unchecked it. Click on Excel files because that's our data source is an Excel file. Click OK. Next we need to locate the Excel repository. It's on the desktop. So I'm selecting it here. Uh, so this um, the the data connection uh, function identified three tables in the uh, in the source Excel file. The one that contains all our data is sheet one, and it's the Iowa State 09 underscore min table. So we want to select that, click Add, and at this point we have the um, we're in a utility, which has been around a long time. It's called Microsoft Query. And it's, um, it's going to enable us to um, perform a, a SQL-like query from the Excel database, uh, the Excel repository. Uh, and there's, I, I want to point out that there's three main areas of this Microsoft Query application that you want to pay attention to. At the top here, we have our, our source table. This is the, the table, which is our data source. On the bottom, we have what's called the data pane, and we want to add a criteria, the criteria pane. And this is where we're going to enter the criteria for the query. All right, so first, to set this up, to set our query up, we want to um, move all the fields from the data table, from the, uh, the source table that we want to include in the output. We want to move them down to the data pane. Then, uh, next, uh, by the way, we could have, instead of selecting the, the star here, the asterisk, which includes all the fields from the data source, we could have done the normal, you know, click control or, or click shift to only select some of the fields. But in this case, I'm just bringing all the fields over. Um, so the next step here is... Uh, in, this, in this example, what I want to do, what I'm going to show you how to do is to grab all the data, meaning all the, all the fields, from uh, the data source that are associated with the date, the timestamp, um, February 20th, 2012. So what I'm going to do is go to the, uh, the, go to the table of fields here, select timestamp, because uh, that's the, the field against which we want to query. And I'm going to drag it down to the criteria panel. Uh, pane, and I'm going to enter the criteria for our query. Um, so I want to say, in order to get the data on February 20th, I'm going to say 22012 greater greater than 22012, and that's at at midnight. And then I'm going to say timestamp is our field again, and I want to say less than or equal to 221. 2012. So that will include the midnight timestamp on 2:21:12. Um, okay. Once we're done with that, you can see just to just to check here. This is a preview at the bottom in the data pane that shows the results of our query. And and there's if we go to the end of that data set, you can see we have 1,440 records that are um, that are being selected as a result of this query and, and that's how many minutes there are in a day so that looks correct. Um, next we want to, we're done with specifying our query so we want to go up here to return the data and that's going to return it to Excel. 
OK. Now we want to go to Connection Properties. And we want to change, I'm going to, in this case, change our, uh, our connection name to ISU Data Query. I'm going to click on the Definition tab and say Export Connection File. Um, and I'm going to save this connection file to the desktop just so everything is in the same place. But by default, it tries to save it in the My Data Sources folder in the Documents, in your My Documents folder. Okay, so this, uh, as you can see here, this this connection properties file has been saved, and it, it includes the connection string, which is pointing to our Excel repository, and it includes the query itself. Okay, um, now I'm going to hit OK, and uh, and again, so this is the usual. Um, import data option where you you can specify where in the worksheet you want to import the data I'm going to accept the default and now it's importing the data and as you can see we've collected uh, from the Excel repository we have collected uh, 1440 rows uh, so that has worked now if we let's let's say that um, we made a mistake and instead of the February 20th data we wanted the data from February 15th and 16th. What you would do then is go up to properties and connection properties and uh, if we go to the definition of our connection in the um, in the command text which is really our, our SQL query um, and if we go down to the bottom we can see this this where clause. This is where we're um, filtering our data based on the timestamp. So if we just want the data from February 15th and 16th, we would say um, where timestamp is greater than the 15th at midnight and less than the 17th, less than or equal to the 17th at midnight, uh, and that'll give us the the two days between the, those two uh, times. All right, click OK. Now this warning is here to tell us that if we um, if we accept this our our uh, query that we just changed, then the file that we've saved, the ODC file, which contains our connection properties, is no longer in sync with with the uh, query that is stored in the Excel file. So. Um, Let's accept that and run the query. And you can see that we go from the 15th at 12.01 down to the 17th at 12 o'clock midnight. This concludes part one of the tutorial, which covers the majority of the content. In part two, we're going to take a quick look at the ODC file and see how we can manipulate it to adjust the query. So that would be an alternate method for um, adjusting the query in addition to the method that I just showed you. So if you're interested in that topic, please visit part two of the tutorial. See you in a minute.